Hello, grade 11, and welcome to our third online lecture. Our theme still is adolescent issues, and the name of our lesson is Escaping Endless Adolescence. By the end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to discuss ideas related to adolescent issues, such as anorexia and school-related anxiety, figure out the meanings of unfamiliar vocab words and terms related to the above theme using context clues, answer different comprehension and critical thinking questions related to the theme, answer organizational skills questions related to title, type of introduction, author's tone, and patterns of organization in a paragraph, and finally categorize, organize information in a chart. So let's begin. As usual, uh, before we begin any lesson, we answer some discussion questions as an opener to the theme. Question number one, name four types of issues that adolescents might pass through. Two, how could such issues affect teenagers? And three, how can teens be helped to overcome such issues? We started the, discussing those last uh, lecture. Let's go through them again. In detail, four types of issues that adolescents might pass through. School-related anxiety, worrying about your grades, competition with your peers, if whether or not you're going to get enough grades to enter a good college. And as you all know, it starts with grade 10. When, when, when a university wants to take you, a prestigious university, it looks at your grades ever since grade 10. So this is also a sort of uh, anxiety source for some adolescents, many adolescents. Peer pressure, a lot of peer pressure, as we said before, could be negative uh, to engage in negative behavior, da dangerous behavior, or maybe the competition between peers. I have this, you don't have it. Look at my profile, look at your profile, etc., causing uh, different types of uh, issues for adolescents. Another uh, adolescent issue is generation gap with parents and other adults, such as uh, teachers, uh, adults within, uh, within their uh, social circle, etc. Finally, health and nutritional issues like not sleeping enough, which is a very common issue among teens, or not eating well. Uh, either not eating at all, uh, eating in very small amounts, or eating a lot of junk food. Number two, question number two, how could such issues affect teenagers? For example, issue number one, school-related anxiety and college-related anxiety. Too much of this could cause a, or lead to generalized anxiety disorder where, where the, the teenager just uh, shuts down or feels a little depressed or maybe very depressed and might need clinical or professional help. Number two, peer pressure, engaging in dangerous, a lot of peer pressure could lead to dangerous or reckless behavior or to feeling inferior to, to their peers. Three, not open up a generation gap. What could that issue lead to if parents are strict and they don't have this uh, communicative relation with their children, their teenage children, what could happen? Here, not opening up to their strict parents about issues dangerous to them might lead this teenager to, to fall more into danger or might get hurt and be afraid of opening up to his or her strict parents because they're more afraid of the punishment than what is actually going to happen to them. And this is a common issue. Finally, health and nutritional issues, what could that lead to? It could lead to anorexia, as is the case with the article we're going to read about. Anorexia is the lack of appetite for food, and uh, the person becomes so emaciated, so thin. Or it could lead to malnutrition, taking the wrong types of food, so when not enough nutrition enters your body, you get anemia, which is blood deficiency and other types of health issues. Finally, number three, how can teens be helped to overcome such issues? Who must they resort to? How can we help them? 
First of all, parents must be alert, must be aware and try to pick up on signals that something th something's wrong with their teenage child and that he or she is suffering from something and they should encourage them to speak up. Have a communicative relationship with their teen child because uh, they don't want to discourage them to speak up about anything they, uh, anything you know suspicious that might be going uh, on with them. And they should feel safe, more importantly, to speak up to them or to, to another adult, for example, at school, a teacher or a supervisor in case they are being bullied at school. Finally, professional help should be sought in case the situation becomes very severe or profound. These are ways that adolescents could be helped. Now, moving on to our lesson, its title is Escaping Endless Adolescence, written by Kelly Rowe. The blurb, read the following text in which the writer talks about some problems of adolescence for one troubled boy. When you are through, answer the questions set on the text. Paragraph number one, as 15-year-old Perry shuffled into my office, Okay, this is the narrator speaking now. With his parents trailing behind, he glanced at, at me with a strained, neutral expression that I had found usually masked either great anger or great distress. Distress means that this person is so sad. In Perry's case, it was both. So Perry was both angry and distressed. Yet his look was neutral neutral face, no expression. As Perry's parents began talking, another problem, but this time overtly, meaning openly, unfolded itself. He was anorexic. And as we said previously, anorexia is an eating disorder where a person has very little or no appetite for food. Although anorexia is an eating disorder most often associated with girls, Perry was the third in a line of anorexic boys I had recently seen in my clinic. So now, nowadays, it is also increasing among boys because the anxiety is increasing in the whole teenage population around the world. When he came to see me, Perry's weight had dropped to within 10 pounds of the limit requiring forced hospitalization, yet he denied there was any problem. So he was severely underweight. Paragraph two, he just won't eat, his mother moaned. Then turning to Perry, who neither opposed her nor made any flippant or rude retort, as most teens his age would do, she tried to show me the routine they had been enacting at home. So Perry was uh, generally a very, um, you know, sort of mannered boy, a very well-mannered boy. He didn't retort at his mother. He, he didn't just throw a... Uh, an angry answer at her. She asked with tears in her eyes, Perry, why can't you at least have a simple dinner with us? Perry, it seemed, always refused to eat with his family, claiming he wasn't hungry at the time and that he preferred to eat later in his room. Yet that rarely happened. New kinds of food, gentle coaxing and encouragement, veiled threats, nagging, and outright bribes had all been tried to no avail. So they tried all these tricks to make him eat, but he wouldn't. Why would an otherwise healthy 15-year-old boy be starving himself? The question hung urgently in the air as we talked. So Perry and his parents were in the clinic of a psychiatrist, a professional helper, because Perry's case have, has become profound. Paragraph three. Let's be clear from the outset. Perry was a smart, well-bred boy. He was well-mannered, well-brought up, and surprisingly unassuming kid. He was getting straight A's, so he was an A student, 90s, in a challenging and competitive school. Okay, we're already starting to see clues as to where he got this anxiety from, and was always on the school's honor list. I later knew that he had gotten a B on his report card since fourth. He hadn't gotten a B on his report card since fourth grade. 
Academically, meaning school-wise, Perry was every parent's dream child. I listened with a professional look to his parents' complaints that Perry hardly spoke of his outstanding academic performance and grades among his relatives and peers. So even though he was an outstanding student, he didn't want to talk about it. Let's read on and see. But beneath this, Perry faced a world of troubles. Look at this, and he's just 15. The problems weren't what I had expected though. Perry wasn't abused, he didn't do drugs, and his family wasn't driven by conflict. Rather, at first glance, his problems would seem more like typical adolescent com complaints, and they were in a way. But it was only as I got to understand him that I realized the adolescent problems Perry experienced weren't just occasional irritations and oscillating moods. Oscillating mean, means moving up and down. You're in a good mood one day and then the other you are in a down mood. That's what oscillating means. As they'd been for me and my age group as teens, but rather had grown more critical to the point where they affected his day-to-day -day world. Paragraph 5. One big problem was that while Perry was a strong achiever, very good at school, he was not happy at all. I hate, this is Perry speaking, I hate waking up in the morning because there's all this stuff I have to do, Perry said. I just keep making lists of things to do and checking them off each day, not just schoolwork, but extracurricular activities so I can get into a good college. Once he got started talking, Perry's discontent spill out in a frustrated way, reflecting some psychological disturbances. So apparently, Perry was uh, overwhelmed. He was under a lot of pressure to achieve and go to a prestigious university. There's so much to do and I have to really work to get myself motivated because I feel like none of it really matters, but it's really important and I do it anyway. At the end of it all, I stay up late, I get all my homework done and I study really hard for all my tests. And what do I get to show for it all? I get a single sheet of paper with five or six letters on it. It's just stupid. Perry was gifted enough to achieve academically as it has been set for him, but it consumed him. So apparently it, it ate him away. Too much pressure on this 15 year old. Paragraph six, eventually I came to realize that Perry was well loved by his parents, as are most of the young people we see. But in their efforts to nurture and support him, okay, give him support, make him grow, his parents inadvertently or without knowing increased his mental strain, increased the pressure on him and placed him under great pressure. Over time, they had taken on all his household chores. So they told him, don't do anything. We will do all your chores for you. We will make your bed. We will fold your laundry. Just go and study. Without them knowing it, they have put him under more pressure. I mean, let him do his chores. Let him, let him just change from the just uh, the, the atmosphere of achieving academically. Inadvertently, without knowing, his parents strained Perry. Okay, so his top priority was school. They said almost in agreement when I asked about this. Although removing the chores from Perry's plate gave him a bit more time, it ultimately, in the end, left him feeling even more useless and tense. He never really did anything for anyone. And if he thought about neglecting his schoolwork, his parents would pressure him to set things right. Trapped between anger and guilt, Perry had literally begun to die away and the lack of appetite for food was only an expression of these feelings. So obviously, uh, Perry's anorexia came from the overwhelming amount of pressure that was set on him uh, without knowing by his parents. So this is just one example of what a teenager might go through. Well, maybe this is not like what most teenagers go through, but th this, is, this is one major issue that they might be facing, especially nowadays with the competition uh, for prestigious universities becoming even more fierce. 
if you want. Now, uh, let's answer question A with you because we haven't answered such, such questions before. Um, I want you to know how these types of questions are done. Fill out the chart below with information from paragraphs two and three. I have referred you to a paragraph so that you don't get confused. You don't have to read the whole thing again. List two positive descriptions the narrator gives Perry. Then state how Perry's behavior reflected these qualities. I want a quality or a characteristic or a trait of Perry, a positive one, and the evidence that led you to say that this is a characteristic of his. One, two. Okay, coming back to the uh, paragraphs two and three, this is what you should write. Paragraph two, we found out that Perry was polite. Why did I write that he was polite? What was the evidence? Perry was neither Perry who neither opposed his mom nor made any flippant or rude retort as most teens his age would do. So he didn't uh, answer back at his mom or yell as many teenagers would do. So it means he was polite. And already in the article, they said that he was a well-bred boy. In paragraph three, I found out that he was smart high achiever or hardworking, you can choose one. Okay, I just want one. But I wrote all the possibilities. How did I find out that he was a high achiever or a brilliant boy or a hardworking boy? He was getting straight A's, this is a clue, in a challenging and competitive school and was always on the school's honor list. So this is it for exercise A. Now your assignment, I would uh, post it as a worksheet in uh, Google Drive, of course, it will be the rest of the worksheet, B, C, D, E, and F. And good luck for any further questions. Please write them down and ask me on Zoom Live. See you and stay safe.